know this man, but let's call him Mr. Anyman. He's been sitting at this desk for years and years. The salary is not much, but it's been a steady, peaceful job. The trouble is, it's a bit too peaceful these days with so many of his friends on war work. Mr. Anyman feels out of it all, and he wants to be in it. But what can he do? At home, he's a bit of a handyman. What can he do? The answer's in his own hands, if only he realised it. Oh, John, you're not at your old vice again. Now, come on, give them all away. I want to see them oh, well, here. Yeah. Well, I'm down. Put them all oh, away. Oh, pretty on. well. At okay. 8.40 next morning, he catches his usual train for the city. Please, excuse me. Yeah. Young train man can help himself in his country at the same time. Fits in some budgery cars. Oh, I'll get bunched together like sardines and comfort. I shall complain. You got this, I think. The ever increasing measure of the train men. You can be one of them. The only experience is going to be free training. This does not mean it's going to be a minute shot. Full details, any employment exchange. That's an idea. And a few mornings later, there's a mysterious bulge in his pocket. John, dear, what have you got there? Oh, nothing. You look so untidy. What will the neighbors say? Hurry, dear, or you'll miss your train. Don't slam the gate. All right, dear. But he lets the 840 go without him, plucks up courage and calls at the local employment exchange. Do you know anything about that sort of thing? Well, a bit, you know. You mean you repair these? Well, in my spare time. Oh, well. And so Mr. Anyman gets his chance to become a craftsman. The exchange sends him to one of the government training centres. He finds himself among a crowd of other chaps, all eager to learn their new jobs. By the way, they're allowed to smoke here whenever they like. The first thing he learns is how to use the calipers and the micrometer and then the hacksaw and the file uh, thank you it's a bit different from pen pushing but most of the chaps are doing something very different from their old jobs he was a stage designer he was a clerk in West Africa Here's a printer, and another printer. He was a salesman, and this chap was a ladies' tailor. They all get a money allowance while they're being trained, and a free dinner every day. Boiled beef and carrots, my favourite dish. The next thing he learns is to set up a job in the lathe and do a bit of turning. Poof. But it isn't as easy as it looks. And it doesn't even look easy to me. But after a month, he begins to get the hang of it. I see. That's better. And more than that, they tell him he's got the makings of a good engineer. He learns to handle more difficult and complicated tools and he takes a course in arithmetic. But this is Mr. Anyman's meat. Oh, me?
And after three months of intensive training, he's almost as quick on the practical side. And as accurate. One more month, and this is what they call a six-way feast. It's a tricky little job. It's got to be right to the tenth of a thousandth of an inch. It's the most difficult thing he's attempted yet. If he can make it, they'll pass him out, a capable engineer. It's the final test. It's got to fit all six ways. And he's made it. Is that all right? Oh, thank you so much. And out into the factory he goes to join in the war effort. Full of confidence for the job he's been trained to do. Yesterday is over your shoulder, don't turn round and say I might have done this, I might have done that, just throw the thought away Face the dawn of a tomorrow, with a smile and come what may Don't look over your shoulder, pal, it's a lovely day today Oh! I never... One of Ernie Bevin's men. Mr. Anyman, engineer. John, what will the neighbours say? Oh, shut up the neighbours. I'm a British worker now.